Hi, I'm David. And I'm Rachel. And welcome to Leisure Beat. And today we're coming from River Bremish Caravan Club site and... And we're also at Cragside, which you can probably see in the background. Fantastic place to visit. So let's go take a look around. It was a lovely run up to the River Bremish site. Some beautiful countryside on the way. Just before you get to the site, there's a little village and in the village, the petrol station sells lots of bits and pieces and it was really well stocked. And we're heading down the lane now and arriving at River Bremish Caravan and Moat Home Club site. The site's arranged in nice little areas, so you've got a number of different options on where you want to pitch. Kind of little cul-de-sacs round the main loop, so it breaks the site up nicely. We stayed on pitch 55, which backed onto the dog walk, and a little bit further in the distance, the river. There's various points across the site with recycling, waste and fresh water, and chemical waste disposal points. The site has a modern facilities block, with a motorhome service point just outside where you can dispose of waste water. You can also fill it with fresh water and just close by if you need it is the chemical disposal point and rubbish and recycling. So plenty of those dotted around the site. Just as you enter into the facilities block, there's a washing up area. You can see the door open there. Let's take a quick look in. As you can see, there's four sinks in the washing up area. There is a baby and toddler room, which was really grand. Had a lovely little bath and lots of useful facilities in there. There's an accessible toilet, a ladies and a gents, and there's also a laundry, which has washing machines and dryers. There's also a couple of sinks as well. So that gives you a bit of a view of the laundry as well as the waste disposal, recycling and water at the main block, there's also some dotted around the site. You can access the dog walk from a number of points around the site. And to be fair, it's more than a dog walk. It's a lovely walk anyway, whether you've got a dog or, or not. You can see how keen Roxy was to go on the dog walk. I think somebody's told her there's a river here. Worth noting that there are a number of areas of deep water, so if you're taking your children, just be careful. There's a nice dog walk on the site uh, that takes you alongside the River Bremish. So just behind me is the River Bremish, and this runs alongside the site. Roxy was loving playing in the river. She loves to catch stones. Throughout the woods, there's little plastic creatures and stickers on the trees that allow the kids to go on a trail and find interesting bits and pieces about nature. There's a hide which you can go inside and look across this area of water and keep your eye open for various birds and other nature. There's lots of little tracks through the woods. It's a really fantastic uh, dog walk on the site or just off the site, you could say, but uh, lots of little places and tracks to walk along. The gorse bushes just behind me remind me of Easter. When I was younger, we used to take some of the yellow and mix it with a bit of water and put it on eggs to decorate for Easter. There's a lovely little clearing when you walk through the tracks in the woods and there's a little fairy garden in the corner but there's a warning sign up about just being careful because there might be adders. A lovely little fairy garden. We'll head back now along the track, 
which takes us back round to the main part of the Caravan and Motorhome Club site. You can just see the site starting to come back into view here as we wander around. There's a newer area of the site where they've built fully serviced pitches with some nice picnic areas. There's even a place to park your bike up there. You can just see it in that section there. Just heading into the main bit of the site again and some lovely landscaping and flower beds. The reception building where you check in on arrival. There's a fish and chip van, five till seven on a Monday. There's also an information room, uh, just so we come along here. And there's a telephone room, but uh, there was a sign on saying it was out of order. There was also some information around charging your electric or hybrid vehicle. Rachel was very kindly cooking me a bacon sandwich in the Ridge Monkey when I got back from taking Roxy for a wander around and explore of the site. After we'd had breakfast, Roxy convinced Rachel to take her out for another wander around and then we headed off to Cragside. It was about 15 minutes from River Bremish Caravan and Motorhome Club site to Cragside. If you're a member of the National Trust, you get in for free with your membership. You can check online and find out how much the current prices are. I'll pop a link in the description below. They told us to park in the coach park and there was another CV there as well when we got in the coach park. How about that? When you arrive at Cragside, you drive over Tumbleton Dam, which holds back Tumbleton Lake. If you're in a large vehicle, then you can park in the coach park, else you can head up to the main car park. There's also an accessible car park up near the visitor centre as well. We're now making our way up to the house along Carriage Drive and through the archway. The archway is part of Carriage Drive, which is a six mile drive along through the Cragside estate. Unfortunately, our vehicle was slightly too big for it, so we couldn't actually do that one. Once you've passed through the archways, you come to the area outside of the entrance to the house. When we were there, the house opened at 11am, but the grounds opened at 10am. So we thought we'd have a wander down to the powerhouse. As always, Roxy found the water and decided to have a paddle in it. There was an area you could normally cross, but it was closed off due to damage from the storms earlier in the winter. We've now arrived at the powerhouse, so we had a look around at all of the different machinery, which was really, really clever for its time. And there's various interactive exhibitions, as Roxy's pointing out there, that you can use to understand how it all worked. There's lots of information as well around how it connected back up to the main house. There was also a battery bank, as Rachel's pointing out there, and shows you how they made the batteries in that day, as well as other gas-powered engines, um, which you can see. So multi-fuel, multi-power throughout the powerhouse here. Just take a final look at the fascinating machinery before we leave the powerhouse and head back up the hill towards the main house. Worth noting there's quite a lot of steps up this route, however I think there may be some more accessible routes that can be found to get to the powerhouse. Some fascinating trees, some of which will have been there for years and years. We were now making our way to the rock garden and there were some really fascinating flowers and very very beautiful. The bridge you can see there goes across towards the formal gardens and we'll go across that in a little while. There were some lovely rock pools coming down through the rock garden, up from where the house is. We then climbed up the path through the rock garden, up towards the house as it was approaching the time when it opened. There were some lovely views from here, across the landscape, which must have been magnificent to actually live here and look out over these each day. We'll take a look around the house now, and I'll leave you in peace with some music while you look around.
I hope you enjoyed the tour of the house there. There's lots more to discover as well if you're there. Then we looked at the experiments and the technology side. Welcome to our reconstruction of elliptical movement in air. Worth noting that dogs are allowed on the grounds but not in the house itself. So Rachel looked after Roxy while I had a look round and we took turns looking round the house. And then we headed across towards the formal gardens where you crossed the bridge we saw earlier. And there were some lovely flowers and a really pretty landscape. Again, must have been amazing to actually live here. And you can see there, there's some deck chairs out if you want to have a sit out and fascinating instruments and things measuring the weather. There were various greenhouses growing different plants and also places to sit and admire the landscape. There are also a number of water features, ponds and the likes. So we'll now finish our tour of the formal gardens again where there's lots more to explore than we've looked at here and we're going to head back now towards the visitors centre where there's a cafe, a shop and various other information places and you can sit outside in the courtyard. We'll now just take a final look at Tumbleton Lake before we head back to the coach park and that concludes our look around of Cragside. So that was the River Bremish Caravan and Motorhome Club site and Cragside uh, which was really lovely I thought. Anyway Rachel what did you think of River Bremish Caravan and Motorhome Club site. I loved it. I think this weekend I can sum up in four things I really enjoyed. Good weather, good places to visit, cracking site. The most important one of all was great people. We've met some lovely, lovely people this weekend and all in all, all together, brilliant. So what did you think then? So I thought it was a fantastic weekend. Nick from the CV Owners Group posted it and we decided we would go along because it's an area we hadn't explored before and it's probably somewhere we wouldn't normally go to and I'm so glad we went so thank you very much Nick, Carl, Archie and Layla. Fantastic hosting there. Now pop a link to your Instagram page so that uh, people can find that and follow your adventures as well and also thank you to Neil and the tin stones, uh, and again I'll pop a pop a link. Links are in the description to all of these if you want to uh, follow them, and I highly recommend you do for really bringing it to life on an evening with the uh, music. And again, absolutely lovely to meet people we didn't know before, and we had a fantastic weekend. And also to Stephen and Elaine, um, so fantastic and little Tilly. And Tilly, yes. Don't forget Tilly. I, I've got to agree with David here. The site was amazing, so thanks, Nick, for introducing us to that site. Neil and the Tin Stones for the music on a night. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better weekend. You know, everything wrapped up into one little bundle. Just absolutely fantastic. Loved it. Please hang around. Don't go anywhere, because we've got the Tin Stones to play us out with. And thank you again. Really appreciate it fantastic weekend and let's play us out now with the tin stones bye bye
happen. Oh. No. You're getting better at that one, that's yeah. all I am. <laughs> <laughs>